Folks, we've got two grill guards here, one from Kubota, one from 511. We are gonna compare these two a little bit later. Is the Kubota really all it's cracked up to be? We'll find out. Folks, how we doing? Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Got a special guest. I think you've probably seen him before. Justin from 511 Grill Guards is here. But we have more than just grill guards to talk about today, don't we? So we have a whole pile. Well, these are mostly Kubota accessories, I guess. But you've got stuff for John Deere too, right? Yeah, full line of John Deere from the 1 Series up through the 5 Series. Yeah, and, and you've been doing this for a while now. Are, are, are you, year 2, year 3? Almost 2 years. Okay. Now, Justin's fairly local. He's over in Chelsea, right? Yes. Okay, so not too far away, just a, a shot down the highway. He was gracious enough to bring all of these accessories over here, and we're going to go ahead and install a grill guard and some side guards on the Kubota tractor today. Been wanting to do that for quite some time, but that's how things go. So there's a lot more stuff here than there was last time, and... I feel like your website has even more on it too, but this is a pretty good look at what you have now. You've really built out your inventory. Now what I like, at least I think, we're gonna have Justin take us through this, is that most of these are, are functional products, right? These aren't just kind of nice to have things. These are actually serving a purpose. So he's, he's solving pain points, which I like. A lot of customers request all the time and wonder why maybe the OEMs didn't have these to begin with, right? And in fact, the first guard that we installed in our 1025R, we found out firsthand just a few short weeks later how that can indeed protect your tractor. So on that note, Justin, what are we looking at? So here on the right, we have some tie rod or steering cylinder guards for many Kubota models of a couple different designs here and they fit a whole slew of different uh, Kubotas. Uh, these from the factory are very thin. They're called covers. I like to call these guards because they're much thicker, seven gauge steel, CNC, uh, laser cut and, and formed and then powder coated in our five-step process. Moving here, tie-down loops for many of the L and uh, 60 series tractors. This has been a challenge for many people trying to tie down their tractor. A lot of people put a strap over the brush guard or tie down to the loader and it really doesn't keep your, your tractor from shifting potentially. These you can put uh, a tie-down on either side, isolating it from, from moving side to side. They're 3 8 inch steel, CNC formed. The opening in it is approximately three and a quarter inches, so you can slide a whole chain hook, whatever, right through it. And folks, I gotta, I gotta show you these things, because these, I'll show you more B-roll too, but this is thick stuff. This is insane material here. I mean, it is, I asked him what models these were for because they're thick and beefy. Nothing's gonna happen to these things, but we'll show you more B-roll, very impressive. Very heavy too. What does these things mm -hmm. weigh? Uh, about three pounds a piece. That's I think crazy. the shipping weight's around seven pounds wow. with wow. the bolts and everything. Very cool. And then moving on, this is a hydraulic line guard uh, for the MX series and a couple other models. From the factory, all you get is this top portion and about halfway down the back, leaving the bottom of your lines exposed. So if you're running your loader and you lower your, your loader down onto a pile of brush or whatnot, these lines are completely exposed and can get bent up. Um, so this completely encapsulates the lines, top and bottom. It's a direct bolt-on. Uh, the factory material is much thinner. This is 11 gauge steel, very heavy. This installs in about five, 10 minutes um, and is ready to go. Uh, next here we have our ROPS mounts for LED lights. These are made out of uh, quarter inch and seven gauge steel. They bolt on with one bolt, you slip it around, this piece locks in, one screw holds it in. Um, these come in a variety of sizes from one and a half by three. This one's two by three. Uh, we also have two and three eighths by two and three eighths for several John Deere models and also a, a two inch by two inch. These will not only fit compact tractors but also lawn equipment, different things like that. And then this, this is another hydraulic line guard uh, for the L-Series 525, a couple of different models. Again, this goes underneath where the factory guard currently just covers the top and the front. This covers the, the rest of the uh, backside as well as underneath. Uh, same uh, idea as this one, it, this one just is in addition to the factory guard. Again, 11 gauge steel on this, much thicker than, than what comes from the factory on the top guard. Next we have a front grill guard for the M series tractors. Um, 
and this is what we'll be installing today along with these side side guards that wrap around the side protect the headlights and the front sides of the the grill there uh, next is a 2032 2038 for john deere um, in our textured black finish and then finally over here is the the guard for the new la 526 kubota that comes on the l 3302 3902 and also some of the l 2501s that are now getting the new loader as well as the 3301 this is a direct bolt-on guard no drilling is required all the hardware is included it's very stout and we'll be talking a little bit more about that guard in a little bit. Well, then we don't want to forget, we've got these mirrors here too, right? Right. These are a, a magnetic mirror, looks like. These go on any loader? Yeah, pretty much anything with a flat surface. Heck yeah. They'll work. Really nice. So, I mean, you know, we've, we've sold, talked about those mirrors that kind of go onto the John Deere loader brackets, but not every tractor has that same setup. And so these, it doesn't matter the brand. Right. Yep. <laughs> John Deere, Kubota, Massey, Coyote, whoever. You've probably sold them to all sorts of owners. And a lot of folks want to know, what can I do if I don't have my loader on? Is there something to mount like up to the grill guard or somewhere up in that area too? So if you do have, you know, flat stock like this Kubota has, for example, you could always put a set on there as well. Options to consider, good to have. And so I know you've got other products that we don't have here. I mean, we filled the bucket up, but yep. <laughs> there's still more. What else you got? So we do have uh, light bar mounts for the ROPs that you can put a 20 inch light bar overhead. Uh, we sell the kit with the light or without. Um, and that lets you have a light bar overhead without having the ROPs up. If you have a, a door that you can't pull your tractor in with a, with a ROPs bar up, you can still have a light overhead and um, the wraps will still fold up and down, so it's got some adjustability. We also have gotten into making some glass guards for Kubota excavators. Um, Two-piece design that has an upper portion that can be removable without any tools. Uh, if you want full visibility, but when you want protection, say you're doing some demolition work and you want to protect that glass, you can install that on there. Just a matter of seconds to take it on and off. Uh, we have one model that's currently available for the KX040-4 uh, and a couple other models that that fits and we're working on releasing some for the 057-5 as well. We've also had several requests for some belly pans so we're currently working on the MX series belly pans. I hope to have a design finalized on that here in a few weeks and be able to do some test fitting. Uh, I think that'll be a, a very good product that solves a lot of problems. There's a lot of things that are susceptible to damage under those machines. So looking forward to having that done as well. All right, okay. You keep saying we, you know, so, so where actually are these things made? Who's making them? What country are they coming from? Well, they're all made in the USA. Uh, and when I say we, I have a good friend that's helped me with some design here and there, has really gotten me through you know, all these different products. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to do all this in such a short period. But uh, we currently use a laser shop that's about 25 miles from us. Uh, they do all our CNC laser work, press break um, operations. And then we have a very good powder coater that's about 20 miles away from us. All in Michigan? Um, yes, all in Michigan. Pretty cool. Uh, we try to keep all of our vendors close by, you know, with quality in mind, keeping an yeah. eye on everything. and. Uh, it's worked out really well. We've built some good relationships and able us, enable us to get out products really quickly at a very good quality level. So, Heck yeah. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it going to help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not going to freeze, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Now, one of the impressive things I think is, I mean, look at how close of a color match that is. And this is a Kubota, but we did a John Deere as well. And I, I had a black and a green guard. I thought the black actually looked just a, a nice contrast to it, but the right. green match is really good too. I mean, you do all sorts of colors, really good matches. Are there any other colors not shown here? Uh, the Just the John Deere green. Okay. Uh, we also have chassis gray for the grill guards, just like these tie rod and okay. tie down loops uh, that match the chassis on Kubotas. But this, uh, this powder coat is so clean and smooth. I mean, is that a 
is, it must be a multi-step process to go do, to do that. Yeah, it's actually five steps. There's a cleaning, a media blast. We outgas it to get any impurities out of the steel, like oil or anything like that, that results in an imperfection on the, the finished product. And then it gets a zinc-based primer on top of that and then the final finished coat. It looks really good. Coat. They look they look very nice. So with all these various products that you now have, I mean, since you've built things out, I mean, what's your lead time looking like? If somebody wants to place an order, how long is it gonna take to ship? Uh, typically next day, sometimes even <laughs> same day, depending on the time. Um, but we try to keep most everything we have in each var color variation in stock. Wow. Uh, we like to get it out to the customer as soon as possible. In times like this where people are waiting weeks and months, they're really impressed to be able to get something right away. Heck so yeah. I can get it across the country usually in four or five days, Midwest, South, two or three days. So wow. try to keep everything in stock, not to say that we don't sometimes run out, but yeah. we, we try to keep a tight control on our inventory to be able to service a customer as soon as possible. And, and everything ships, is it, I mean, ground, right? UPS ground or FedEx or something like that. Typically, it doesn't have to go freight. Yeah, typically UPS ground. Okay. And I think that's pretty sweet because as a fellow business owner that sells not so many things that fit, you know, they'd have to be a gigantic box like this. That doesn't fit well under a Christmas tree, but these are really good Christmas gifts or Father's Day or birthday gifts or whatever else. They come in small boxes. We can show you some of the boxes too, but this stuff is, and it's well packaged. I felt bad. These, <laughs> these were all products that Justin had brought over in boxes that could be shipped out to customers. We ripped it all open and set it all out here. I mean, he does a really good job packing this stuff. I could, I could learn something from him. All right, so anyway, we're gonna show you the Kubota guard versus the 511 guard. You know, Justin's one of the OGs in the grill guard game, all right? He's one of the first that was kind of mass producing these guards and there's, there's others out there. That's fine, competition's good, but Kubota has gotten into this game as well. So let's put them side by side and see what we think. All righty folks, so we've got them side by side. We've got the Kubota version, the OEM version in black over here, the 511 in orange. Now these are for the same model of machine. They look different, but they're gonna fit the same Correct. Model, yes, right? the, the new uh, LA-526 loader. Okay. And that's a tractor with that model. Like the LA, or uh, what is that, the L3902? 3302. 3302. And the newer... 25 Some of the 2501s, yes, we'll have a 526 loader. Okay. All right. So it's it's strange that these actually fit the same fit the same loader. What's what's the difference here? Take us through this. So the first, first difference I noticed in these... Are, the size of the holes. So the whole purpose of this is to try to keep out limbs, branches, anything that can damage both the headlights, grill, radiator, that kind of thing. So on our guards, we, we try to keep that mesh fairly tight, you know, to the point where you could maybe get your thumb through it or something like that, but try to keep a, a nice tight pattern to block out as much as possible. Um, also, you'll notice the 511 guard is quite a bit taller, about three inches. Uh, so this one stops short and is above the pivot point of the, the factory brush guard, where ours actually uses the, the pivot point or the pivot bolts on the brush guard as one of the mounting locations. So an additional two mounting points on that, which also brings it down about three inches for a little more coverage and protection. Uh, one thing that is common between these is each of them can be bolted onto the factory frame without any drilling. Um, so carriage bolts come supplied with ours. It's about a five minute installation, maybe 10, uh, because you're also mounting at the pivot locations on our guard. Um, one of the biggest things is, is thickness too. In addition to the large holes in the, the Kubota guard, it is much thinner than ours. Ours is 11 gauge steel. Um, so that's a, a big item when it comes to strength and protecting your equipment. Good. Well, another thing is like I mentioned earlier, these we try to keep them in stock, each of the color variations. This one I actually uh, purchased from our local dealer because um, I wanted to do a comparison like this. I ordered it back in, I believe it was May, didn't come in until mid-August, so about a three month lead time. Ours is probably three days. All right, I gotta, I gotta try this really quick too. So give it, okay, you can hit right down there in the middle. There's a difference here, folks. This one's cheaper and you get what you pay for. You have big old holes like that and it bends, it gives right away. I, you know, it's kind of like when I talk about the clamp on forks for your bucket, it'll get you by, it'll do something, but one of the most 
popular things that folks get from me are a regular set of pallet forks because they upgrade from the clamp-on forks after spending money on those, trying to save a buck, and it just costs you more money in the long run. I, you know, personally, it does, it's a good looking guard. I'm not gonna knock that, but I feel like it should be built beefy. The point of this is to look good, but also be functional to protect what's behind it. And this, to me, a little lacking, in my own opinion. Alrighty folks, that's enough of the fun. Time to get to work. We're gonna put the front and the side guards on here. Should be a pretty short process. Can't wait to see what it looks like. So we're gonna leave the loader on to do this install. Shouldn't be a big deal. I don't think, I'm not actually doing, doing the install. So anyway, we're gonna let Justin show us the way here. Let's get to it. So on this design, we're gonna start by loosening up and removing those two larger bolts at the pivot point. This guard utilizes those bolts as one of the mounting points, so that's where we're gonna start today. So we're gonna start by breaking these nuts loose down here at the pivot point. So what I like to do on these is leave one bolt sticking out like this, and then the other one, leave it so it's still into both pieces, but it's somewhat flush, so you can put the guard in there. Then we're gonna replace the washer on each side, followed by the two nuts. For now, we're just getting the lower part located so we can mount the upper locations. This is up to the, the owner's preference, but I typically use a, leave a little bit of a gap here. You can push it back until it makes contact. I just prefer to leave a little bit of a gap yeah. to prevent uh, the powder coating rubbing off or, or whatnot. So now I'm going to mark these holes. So I had these clamps out just in case the guard moved on us at all, but I, I use these on a lot of the ins installations just to keep it positioned. Some of these have more adjustability as far as up and down and lining up with the headlights, so these are sometimes very helpful in installation, but we didn't need them in this case. I typically start with about an eighth inch drill bit as a pilot before proceeding to the three eighth size drill. So when you buy the side guard kits, they come with longer bolts uh, because we'll be going through, at least on the top hole, this plate, the factory guard, and then the front guard. So you use the longer bolts on, on th those locations. And there's a few different spots that you can mount these based on preference. On this one, we have a little bit of a limitation on the, the lower part here because of the pivot bolt. So we'll be using this slot here Go ahead, just put the bolt through there, through the factory guard, and through the front guard. And at this point, you put a washer on there along with a nut and just leave it all loose. Kind of adjust where you'd like it. And then once you get it into the position you'd like, then mark the outside of the guard here for the corresponding slot. Or inside. I'll it for the... oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> So I do want to mention, on this particular model, this pin that holds the guard from rotating forward typically protrudes through the outside or exterior of the factory guard. Um, this side guard will keep it from doing that, but it'll still be engaged through this. Um, so I've had customers ask, is that an issue? But it still will stay engaged. You still have to pull the spring-loaded pin in order to disengage the, the tilt function. So. That should be fine. This is 732nds Allen wrench and 916ths box wrench. Don't really need to over tighten these. We supply the nylon lock nuts so they shouldn't be loosening up. So now we're going to, going to tighten these lower nuts down just enough to get 
the right tension. You want a little bit of tension, but don't want it flopping around. That feels pretty good there. A little bit. Well, folks, this looks amazing. And thank you, Justin, for putting this on. That was awesome. He made it look so easy. It took 20 minutes, I think we said? Yeah, about. Not that. So not bad. Four holes is all you're drilling. Just, you know, measure twice, cut once. You know, the old adage there. But great protection. I think coming out with these side guards was a really good idea, too. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of exposure over on those sides, too. So well protected ready to put it to work. So you're gonna get these from 5.11. You don't get these through good works. You go to 5.11's website to place your order. Use code GWT to save 5% off of your order and Justin will get it shipped out to you. Now one final note, you're gonna wonder what guards, what side guards, front guards, everything else fit your tractor. So I know for a lot of the front guards, you've got the models listed Correct. for each one on there. For the side guards, they're gonna have some of the models on there. If they're not listed, just, just reach out? Yeah, reach out just to make sure that they're compatible. Okay, so a big thank you to Justin for making the trip over. Tractor looks great, really dressed it up, but it's it's functional, right? It, it not only looks good, but it's gonna protect my tractor. It's gonna happen, right? It, it happens to so many owners out there. A lot of you guys have these guards. A lot of you guys have had stuff go through your front screen into your radiator, or whatever else is behind there. So get one of these. Again, great Christmas gift, birthday gift, Father's Day gift, Mother's Day gift, you name it, right? Now, while we don't sell these grill guards ourselves, we do sell all sorts of tractor attachments for the front end loader and the three-point hitch. So if you're looking for something for your machine, check out goodworkstractors.com. What are you, no thanks. I'm not looking to have any holes there. No, if you enjoy tractor videos, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.